Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about the sport of snowboarding and more specifically I'm going to break down the origin of the snowboard itself and then get into some of the greatest athletes in the sport and then I'm going to talk about the growth um, that the sport has had on a recreational level and how many people have joined the sport throughout the years. Um, So first, I'm going to talk about the origin of the snowboard. So snowboarding was created in 1965 by a man named Sherman Poppin in Muskegon, Michigan. And uh, if you look at the bottom, bottom left specifically at that photo, that is the prototype that he first created, which was pretty much just two skis that were bolted together that tried to act like a snowboard. And that was the idea he had in his head, but throughout the years, this idea got very modified into what we think today as what the snowboard is. And then in 1972, Dmitry Milovich, who was a student, student at Cornell, um, he invented the winter stick, which was uh, his original model. And he made this device to quote unquote, surf the snow and it looks very similar to the modern longboard skateboard, which is the photo in the middle there of the winter stick. And then next we have Jake Burton, who kind of perfected that idea of the winter stick by creating the modern snowboard with the two rounded edges that we all know today. And unlike the other people, he released a catalog to sell all of his different products early in the 1990s. And it was kind of a novel idea, not a lot of people did it because they didn't have the means to do it at the time or the creativity. And this kind of caused people to want to take part in this trend and become part of this industry because of what they saw he could create. So the next we're going to be getting into some of the best snowboarding athletes in the sport. First and foremost, uh, we have Sean White, and he has amassed a ton of titles, but most notably, he has three Olympic gold medals and 13 X Games gold medals, both which are records for the sport. And um, those medals uh, make him widely considered to be the greatest snowboarder of all time, far and away. And also, he was given the nickname the Flying Tomato, which is from his uh, long red hair you can see in the photo on the uh, right hand side. And then he also competed competitively in skateboarding and won several awards, including two X Games gold medals in 2007 and 2011. Then next, uh, we have Ross Ringwalti, and it was. Um, Snowboarding was first introduced to the Olympics in 1998, which were in Japan, and he became the first uh, gold medalist in the sport um, in the men's giant slalom event, which was the first ever snowboarding event held in the Olympics. And so controversy surrounding him is he tested positive for cannabis, so then the committee ended up stripping away his medal for around a year. But then he went to uh, appeals court in 1999 and they ruled in his favor. So he was able to get his medal back in the end. And then next we have Mark McMorris and he was known um, as the first person to complete a backside triple court for 440, which was a trick that was considered near impossible and he was the first one to do it. And then also, he was one of the few people to win a double gold at the X Games, which is winning gold in two separate events during the X Games, which not a lot of people have done, and he was one of the first to do it. And then on top of that, he also has three bronze Olympic medals across three different Winter Olympic Games. And this is pretty much due to his, I guess, uh, courage that he has for all his new tricks and styles that he's willing to kind of put out there into the sport and try, and which is why he's known as also one of the best in the sport. And then lastly, we have Chloe Kim, who is uh, relatively young, but her track record so far definitely makes her one of the best. So um, at the first Winter Olympics, which is in uh, Pyeongchang, South Korea, she won the gold medal in the women's half pipe, and she won it by a total of eight and a half points, which is a pretty large margin for any event like that. And this was at age 17, so at that point, she became the youngest woman ever to win the gold in the women's half pipe. And this previous record was held by a women's snowboarder named Kelly Clark, and she won that when she was 19. 
And then the very next Olympics in Beijing, China, she went back to back and won the women's half pipe again. And this made her the first female snowboarder to win back to back gold medals in the snowboard half pipe event. And then next, we're going to be taking a look at kind of the growth of the sport over the years and how it's kind of evolved to today. So since the 2000s, the number of snowboarders has increased by 77%, making it one of the fastest growing sports in the world. And in the year 1996, there were a little under 2 million around there. And then today, uh, the number was 3.4, but it's actually over 4 million. So that number has doubled and is continuing to grow today. And then 97% of ski resorts universally accept snowboarders, and that number is only going up. Um, as well as, I have two pictures here of two snowboard bindings. The one on the left is kind of the old age snowboard binding with two straps to keep your foot locked in so that way you don't fly off the board when you go down the mountain. But then uh, Burton came and created the step-on binding, which was made so that way people can change their boots and bindings and get into their board easily. And if it's easier to ride, then they can get more participants. And then also some of the most popular areas, obviously for snowboarding, are both of the coasts of the country because they have more of an influx of snowfall and it makes it a lot easier to ski um, in those parts of the country. So then uh, overall, I hope that you guys learn a little more about snowboarding and kind of the growth and who was part of it and the origin of the snowboard itself. Thank you.